Hey, welcome to 23 Degrees Sideways Coyote in the Highlands. I'm still uh, back against this wall and the sound is going to echo a little bit. It's a little bit weird. I'm still working on the space in this location. This is a part-time location we're dealing with here. But it's got a really nice view and it's giving me some stuff that I really need to work on. So there's conversation going on about good and bad and how, you know, people do things that are objectively good and bad. And you know, it turns into this whole conversation about morality. And one of the people in the conversation says that they're trying to get away from the idea of moral good and bad and talk about taking actions and doing things in your practices. This is coming from a Buddhist perspective. And Buddhists have a lot of good and bad, a lot of moral and immoral and the Eightfold Path and the, the different jhanas and, and all this stuff, right? Um, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of judgment in Buddhism. Um, but anyway, the person's coming, coming at this from a Buddhist perspective, but trying to get away from moral judgment and be like, well, it's not good and bad in the moral sense that, that I'm ta trying to talk about. It's good and bad in how it affects you. Is it good for you, bad for you? For example, eating disorders are one of the topics that came up, you know, and it's like, well, obviously having anorexia is objectively bad for you. And I'm like, well... I mean, it's objectively not healthy for the physiology of the body. I could, I could go that far. But when we start to use the labels of good and bad, we're starting to talk about things like, well, you know, your, your experience with anorexia was bad, but was it actually good? You know, good and bad, again, here become judgment-laden. It's Even if you're not trying to make it moral, would you trade your life experiences and who you are away because the life experiences were bad? Would you suggest, would you prescribe to people that they do things that you think are good in the sense of healthful as opposed to bad because your notion, because you, you think that your notion of good and bad, healthy and unhealthy, are what they need in their life, you know, what the what experiences they need. And this gets into some really weird spaces because we're talking about souls and life scripts and experiences and what happens with those experiences. And that gets really, really rough with a lot of people because now you have to, you, you know, it's hard to say nothing is evil. Uh, it's hard to say that and have it mean anything to anyone. There are some people for whom that does have a significant meaning and there's a recognition there. But for most people, that's not going to be the case. But maybe expand your ideas of, of evil or bad or good or whatever to include the idea that people can have life experiences which you don't consider personally valuable, but which might be valuable to them to develop who they are. And that's, that's kind of a big one, you know, that's, that's where, where I, I run into problems when people talk, and this is enlightenment community stuff, okay, this is not when I'm trying to talk to a, a moral, a moral philosophy oriented Christian. Okay. someone who has God has said this is good, this is evil, you know, or a Buddhist, because they they have very strict good and evil definitions in a lot of areas. But when I'm talking in the Enlightenment community, you know, you kind of have to, uh, not have to, it seems useful to broaden your perspective on good and bad and get more into allow and accept rather than say, oh, that's bad. Why don't you just say, oh, that is. The, 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 the idea I'm getting at here is that instead of good and bad, the judgments just say, hey, you know, that's a thing. That, that is. It exists. Once you accept it, once you allow its reality, then you can talk about, hey, you know, for me, this wouldn't be promoting my, my spiritual well-being or 
stuff. So I don't know where you're at, but for me, this would be this would be like destructive to maintaining my awareness. Now there's stuff out there that we know. You know, we can measure. We can we can tell. There's we have enough psychology. Um, psychological knowledge and practice, practical, pragmatic stuff that we can say with some degree of certainty that generally speaking, most people are not going to be benefited by certain activities or certain mental patterns or certain behavior patterns. So, you know, we, we do have a prescription. We have a way to, to get people upwards and forwards and whatever. But at the same time, uh, being able to do that without judgment, without judging the person or their life, is pretty important, you know. And this good and bad thing always comes back to judgment. Even when you say that you're ta trying to talk about objective benefits or costs or positives or negatives, you know, you've, applying a utilitarian judgment doesn't mean it's not a judgment. It's just a different kind of judgment. Frankly, I think utilitarianism makes a really shitty morality. But, you know, that's me. So, that's where we're at. That's where I'm at with this, is, is good and bad are really difficult concepts to, to work with usefully, successfully, in a manner that promotes your spirituality, in a manner that promotes your own personal enlightenment, unless you've got the allowing and the accepting first. And I don't know how to get that across to people who don't, who aren't on this side of the fence. So maybe this isn't the video for everyone, right? But good and bad don't really exist. You know, um, they're judgments and they, I mean, obviously they exist internally because everything in your reality is created internally. But prescribing them and trying to make them into an objective reality suite of, of concepts, uh, I don't know. I don't know how useful that judgment really is internally. Acting as if the judgment is real when you're in, when you're trying to build a society that might be useful. You know, we we can talk about that. That's all I got. Stay sideways.